Jesus was a rock star. Focus on your heart and mind on the Lord and pray with me and say, Jesus, help me to be what you want me to be. Do what you want me to do. Because people without you go to hell. Bless God. Well, we are starting our thing, and we have our core values. And today's core value is we are faith-filled, bet-the-farm risk-takers. Uh, and so that's what we're, and this is the, the same slide. I just changed the date on it as last year, but it's a very different year than it was last year. And it's, I'm happy that you're here. And for those of you that are watching online, but I'll tell you, there's a whole lot who are not here and are not watching online that are now dying on the vine and they're having to carry so much on their own because they're not fellowshipping with God's people. That's just the reality of it. It's just the reality of it. It's not a condemnation. It's a, you're, there are people in there who are suffering because they've been separated from the body. And so how do you even begin to do uh, ministry with that? Now, how do you have faith-filled big dreams when the cash is low, the people are low, the volunteers are low, all of the resources are suddenly gone? And not all of them, because I got some beautiful, wonderful, godly uh, people here today. Thank you so much for being here. And some of you come to help set up and things. It's just wonderful. Thank you so much. So, so when I say that our resources have been taken, I don't mean you guys. We are so blessed to have each other right now. That is the truth. But we don't have the resources volunteer-wise we once did uh, because a lot of them are home uh, and, and haven't even come back to church yet. And so, But the thing is that your relationship with God, it isn't just personal, but it is also corporate. In other words, it has always been God's interaction with his people that we would pray individually and we would come to God corporately or as a group. From the very beginning, people have, have done that. So there's a personal call of God on your life. I believe that. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. And, but you can do more on a team. So not only does God have a purpose and a plan for your life, I believe that God has a purpose and a plan for Rock Church. I think that we're here for a reason. I think that some of you and some of the folks watching and some that aren't here that are kind of that the outer group, <coughs> there's a whole lot of folks that we have touched that, that no other churches were anywhere near. And so, you know, we might not be the coolest kid on the block, but there are some folks that if it wasn't for us, they, they would not know God like they do now. And be, doing things together is, is different. So we are called of God. So the question for this month is, what is God calling us to? What, what does he want us to do? Well, we have some core values, okay? And I don't know if you, and, um, and, and those, these are our four core values we'll be going through for the next four weeks. Again, those QR codes, they all blink, bring up individual uh, messages, and they'll be updated as we do these as we go. But the first one is, is uh, or w one of them, I don't know if they're even in order, is spiritual contributor. We believe that um, the church doesn't exist for us. We believe that we are the church, and we exist for the world. The next one is irrationally generous. We're, there's going to be times when we are just going to give when it doesn't make any sense into our community, into the lives of each other. God owns us completely. And then probably the one that I get the most excited about is that we will do anything <coughs> short of sin to tell somebody about Jesus. Uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to have a, 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 a stripper ministry with Sister Sludge and the Mud Honeys. We're not going to do that because that would be sin, right? But... Uh, w there's nothing we won't do to get Jesus in front of somebody. I'll, I, I, I've done goofy stuff in the past that I could take some time now, but I've given away stuff. I've done, do, do you remember the naked rock star I had on thing? He wasn't naked. He just wasn't wearing a shirt. I didn't notice he wasn't wearing a shirt until I looked at the screen. And he, anyway, that was, that was how that is. But today, today we have something kind of hard. It is faith-filled uh, big thinking. And here's the whole statement. We are faith-filled, big-thinking, bet-the-farm risk-takers. We will never insult God with small thinking or safe living. That, that is our, um, that's our value. <coughs> and so 
uh, I'm thinking, Lord, how, how do we even begin to talk about vision and values right now when nothing works? When never, I mean, it's like it, it's you, you can count the months until all the money runs out. Uh, it's, there's, it's, it's not an easy time. So how am I going to do it? So then I thought, well, I know what I'll do. I want to see what we did last year. So I watched our my faith-filled, big-thinking, Beth-the-farm, risk-taker sermon from last year. And I shared with you all kinds of things that we were betting the farm and we were going for. Um, and one of those things was that we were excited about was Pastor Cal's ministry. And if you remember uh, 53, uh, 51, we, 53 weeks ago, Cal was here next week, last year. Does that make sense? Um, and Cal was with us. And we, at that time, we uh, started giving to his new ministry. But what we were most excited about, Elizabeth and I were going to go to a Chicago outreach. We were going to go try to, um, and we were going to go to help go to some towns and get involved in any way we could. We thought, hey, here's a, a ministry that we really believe in. We can. And then COVID happened, and we didn't get to do any of it. All of the plans that were made. Missionaries been coming home and, and, and can't go back out to the mission field. It is broken all over the place right now. So how do you even begin to be faith-filled and, and big thinking when you've never had less money, you've never had enough resources, and even if you had the resources, <laughs> you can't even invite people to church good. So how do we have faith now? Well, Jesus was amazed twice in the Bible. There's two times when Jesus, when it says that he was amazed. The first one is in Mark 6, 5. It says, and because of their unbelief, he didn't do many miracles among them, except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. So he was amazed that they didn't believe him. He was amazed another time. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. The crowd that was following him said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And anybody remember who that was? It wasn't even a Jewish dude. It was the Roman centurion. Jesus was amazed by his faith. So Jesus is amazed by two things. He's amazed at a lack of faith. And Jesus is amazed at great faith. Now, this is the same slide that was there last year. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a funny thing. Today, would God be amazed at how bold your faith is, or would he be amazed at your lack of faith? I don't know. Last year, that was an easier one to say. Last year, <clears throat> I had had far fewer insecure, I feel like a loser days <laughs> than I have this year. And, and, and don't worry, I'm, you don't have to worry about me. I think we're all in that boat. I think that our, our society is carrying insane stress. I think all of the craziness in politics, I, I think it's stir crazy. I think there's a psychosis happening uh, in us. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to study the sociology of this. I had three conversations this week with people that, uh, where they shared, you know, I'm usually real excited about this thing that's coming up. I'm just not excited about it. I've heard that a number of times, and it's like, it, it, and I, I'm that way too. I, I've got this big conference that we go to every couple of years, and we have really sacrificed a lot to go in the past, and, um, and I'm just like, this year, I'm kind of like, I, I take it or leave it. it it's just, I'm just mission something I just love, you know? And so would God be amazed by my faith or my, or my lack of faith? And then how, how would the world be different if God answered every prayer you prayed this week, this last week. How, how would the world be different? Would world hunger be eradicated? Would there be people that have put their faith in Christ? Or maybe the persecuted Christians around the world. Maybe they are um, not having to be persecuted and not having to be killed and harmed. Would family and friends be passionately in love with Jesus today if God would have answered all of your prayers? Or would your food be blessed you made it to grandma's house safely, and you did not die before you wake. <laughs> what a terrible prayer. If I die, my mom changed that prayer. We didn't die in our house. I don't know if that was the Methodist way or if my mom just changed that. I'm not quite sure how that is. But, um, but would God be amazed at your great faith, or would he be amazed 
that you didn't attempt anything, that you didn't pray, you didn't ask for anything, and you didn't do anything significant. Now, last year and the year before, I put this slide up on the screen. And I asked you to rank your faith from 1 to 10. Low being, you just don't believe anything. Like you, you know, and 10 is Jesus. And so don't say you're a 10, okay? So 10 and 1, where would you rank on this? Well, again, that was a little, I could be, be pretty bold last year and say, you know, I'm probably a 7, you know? I got faith more times than I don't have faith. And um, this year, I have to hesitate a little bit. I have to hesitate a little bit because the world is just, it's changed, and I'm carrying it, and, and I only live in my own head. And so I don't know what it's been like to be you, but I know what it's like to be me, and I'm watching what's happening in the world. I think we're all carrying this, whether we want to admit it to ourselves or not. Um, the, it's just the world's gone crazy. And so um, I'm, you know, I have good days and bad days. I'm just going to be real transparent with you right now. I can tell you that my devotional life is strong and rich. Um, and about three years ago now, boy, the time it goes fast. The Lord, I had a personal revival. And my alarm, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, I wake up at 4, and I'm typically up by 4.15, 4.30. And I get a solid two, two and a half hours with the Lord in the morning before anything else happens. And it's... It, and, um, and it's been a gift from God. It's just, it's only by his grace that I'm able to do that. Um, but the, uh, those, they're not all the same, <laughs> you know? Some days you get up and, this is, and you're just putting the time in. You're keeping the habit alive. You're not hearing, I'm not hearing from God. The word isn't coming alive to me. Uh, you know, I, I, when I pray for, I, I tell you what, it's hard for me. When I go to pray for my church people, and then I realize I haven't been in church for months and months, it's really hard on a guy early in the morning. Um, and, and so I'm praying for you. I'm praying for different things. And, and I, well, I'll tell you yesterday, I was up, and I had a bad dream. Actually, I've been having a, a number of bad dreams lately. Usually it has to do with, uh, uh, well, I, I can't tell you the whole dream. It usually has to do with me being ineffective in ministry. Is really th this morning, I woke up and a good pastor friend of mine who uh, has a church of about 200 people, I, I saw him in a meeting and he said, yeah, oh, Scott, we had Bible studies for married couples. We had 500 couples in their church of 200. And I just felt like a loser. So, so I'm, just, I'm being transparent. Again, you don't have to worry about me. Um, but, this, but yesterday, I'm sitting in my chair in my lazy boy, 22-year-old lazy boy, by the way. It's awesome. I can't get a new one because my butt might not fit as good in the new one. Um, sitting in my lazy boy, and I'm, do, I'm going through the motions. I'm doing my scripture memorization. I'm looking at some worship videos and trying to close my eyes and have a worship experience. I'm trying to get some caffeine in me, you know. Uh, and, uh, and then I, I thought, you know, I, I'm going to listen to hymns. Now, if you know me, not a big hymn guy. Um, and, and I never have been, but I got some hymns that have been that I find singing in my personal devotional time. And so I was looking at different hymns, and so I put on a channel on YouTube uh, of, of contemporarily done hymns. And this song came on, Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, not the one we sang today, but the hymn. Uh, All the earth shall praise your name song. And, and I am not into it, okay? I am not into it at all. And, and I have, uh, I think, you know, it, I might have even watched some videos that had nothing to do with God on YouTube. But I, but I was watching these, and, I, and that song came on, and we're going to do the song in church here. I'm just not ready to do it yet, because I just heard it for the first time every yesterday. Um, and I'm listening to this song, and then I, I can't quite tell you what happened, but the presence of God came on me. I, I don't know how else to say it. It was like... I'm just, I feel like a dud. And then all of a sudden, he was just there. And, and it was like, you know what? It, God, your presence makes everything okay. And so my salvation during this time has been my devotional life. If you are not spending time with God, I'm, I'm telling you, you're having a much difficult time. I know for me and my emotions and, and, and tendency to mood swings and, and being manic, 
um, that I have bad days, but I don't have bad weeks, if that makes sense. Because when you offer yourself up to God, it doesn't mean every day is revival, but it does mean he's, he's got you on a short leash and he's able to give you that tug. And so on lowest to highest, there, there are days when I've been a two lately. When God, I just, I'm, I'm just, I just don't know what to do, Lord. And, and I daydream about going camping. I've done more daydreaming about being in the woods by myself, I think, than ever before. Um, but I tell you, when the presence of God comes, and you're sitting in your lazy boy at 5 o'clock in the morning, it, and, and, and I got emotional. I wept. It was just that, it was, and the song was on my computer. It wasn't on a sound system. It just, it just came, and I, and, and the song might not even be that good. It might have been just God doing something special in that moment. I don't know, but it was, it was just a powerful moment. And so I'm here to tell you that we serve a God that knows exactly what we're going through. I'm here to tell you that God knows who you are. He knows your name. He knows what's been happening inside of your head. So today I got three faith-filled facts. You cannot play it safe and please God at the same time. The scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's Hebrews chapter 11. Do you remember what was in Hebrews chapter 11? We call that the the hero chapter because all of these heroes. And at the end of Hebrews chapter 11, Paul says, and all of them, talked about Abraham, talked about, I think Gideon was in there. He talked about all these Old Testament guys. All of them died ever having never seen the promise. They all died. They left this side of eternity, and they never got what God had promised them. Well, I'm always whining at God that he didn't give me what I thought he promised me, you know, that things are not going the way I kind of thought they should. And all these guys died. Uh, And I've learned never to let my pride keep me from faith. Because you know what keeps me from trying something new? Whether it's going for a note I'm not sure about to sing in worship, or whether it has to do with doing something online, or whatever it has to do with going up and talking to somebody, it's pride because I don't like being rejected. I want the people around me to respect me and like me and think I'm really cool. That, I want that. And so often that, the thing that holds me back from stepping out is, is pride, and it's what people think. And failure is often your first step forward. You can look all through the scripture. I can't unpack that today, but I think you know that's true. If you haven't failed lately, uh, you're, you're probably not trying to walk in faith. Wait a minute, Pastor Scott. If you were walking in faith, you would not fail. Well, that's kind of true because um, if you're doing what God says, that's never a failure no matter what it looks like. But I'm talking failure from the world's perspective. How about Jeremiah's ministry? How successful was that? Well, Babylon came, didn't they? You know, uh, What about uh, all these guys who died and they never saw the, the purpose? How about John the Baptist that died in prison we talked about last week? I mean, these, uh, if you're not failing now and again, you're probably not doing what God has asked you to do because his success uh, completely looks different than us. And we're not going to do it now, but look at uh, all of those people that we looked at last week and I ran through them. All of those folks, that they walked through failure from the world standard. But they weren't failures, were they? They were exactly where God wanted them to be. And so we may not understand this moment in history, but we know that we know that God has our back. That he knew it was coming, and he is good, and he is faithful. You can have faith, and you can have control, but you can't have both. You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't have faith and control at the same time. (laughs) As long as you have a guarantee, you don't have faith. That's what faith is. And the thing is, is that faith is how we please God. (laughs) And so, how does that mean then? I have to not know what's coming next for me to please God. I have to be out, not kind of running out of my own steam to please God. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. So to step towards your destiny, we have to step away from our security. Now, what does that mean for us right now? Well, I I don't know, to be honest with you. I'm still wrestling through some of that. But I know it would be very typical of God to ask me to give more than I typically have given. 
it, it would be very typical of God to ask me um, to love some people, that, to go out of my way in some different areas and some different things. And so I don't know, but I do know that to step into my destiny, I have to step away from security. Now, when you get, uh, when you're married, and some of you are married, some of you will be, some of you have been, I, um, you have to be together with your, with your spouse on, on a lot of things, lots of things. And yesterday morning, I was this or this morning, I, I think it was yesterday morning, I said, tomorrow I'm preaching faith-filled. That's going to suck. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, how do you preach faith-filled when nothing works? And Inger Lisa said, that's my favorite one. Well, that's really encouraging because if, we take, if I do something crazy and faith-filled, she's coming for the ride. Now, just so you know, she has always had my back. Um, and, and we have been together in everything we have done. But I tell you, it's great confidence that comes on my heart when I know that, she's, that she is right there with me. By faith, Abraham was called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance. He obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. And I don't know. I, I have lost my job before. I have been between, I have not, I have failed at trying to do ministries. I've done all kinds of things. But, as, but I always had a plan, even as I was failing, my whole life. I've always had a plan. I, I had a five-year plan when I was 15 years old, okay? I, 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 I've always, I got no plan right now. I, I just don't. I, we, we have seen our church uh, numbers go down. We've seen, I, I, it, there's no plan because you don't even know what to do. I'm beginning to get some ideas, but uh, Abraham, did Abraham has peace? when he walked his son to the mountain to kill him? I don't think so. Um, somebody says, well, I, I can't step out in faith because, um, because I, or I'm, I don't have peace about it. Have you ever heard that? Well, I prayed about it, and I don't have peace about it, so I, I can't get involved in that ministry or that thing. There has never been a time when I, I have taken a step of faith and felt peace. Those two things have never happened at the same time. Peace uh, God led his people through very, un I always can find peace in him, but I, I'm no saint. It's not all the time. I mean, it's, it's, if it's easy, it's not easy to step out in faith. Otherwise, everybody would, would do it. But it's time for us, Rock Church, to take a step of faith. It's a, true for us individually, and it's true for us as a church. And as I stand before you today, I wish I could tell you I had heard from God and I have a plan. I don't. But I think I will. I'm seeking God right now. I hope you're seeking God right now for your own life. But also, would you help me in praying and say, Lord, what do you have for Rock Church? What's our next step? God, you don't have to tell us anything else. But we, we just would like our foot to land in the right spot the next step that we take, God. And I think that if we do that, I think he's going to answer our prayer. Now, we've done some crazy things. I've had my back against the wall before. One time I, um, I needed some money to do some things and some outreaches and stuff. And, and, well, I, and I wanted to do some outreaches. And somebody gave the church a combine. I sold the combine for $42,000 on an auction. Took that money, and I bought a bunch of advertising on Facebook. This is going back like six years, something like that. And I bought some advertising on Facebook before it got cool. Uh, it, 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 nobody was doing it yet, and, and uh, not churches, I mean. And I uh, spent a lot of money. I spent, I think it was $6,000 I spent on. Now, before you get too crazy, if you did an every mail mailbox, you can get to $6,000 very quickly. If you do a mailing, you can get to $6,000. If you take out an ad on radio, you are way more than $6,000. If you, do, there's a lot of things you can spend $6,000 on. And, and I spent a lot of money in my ministry on, um, you know, outreach. But I spent about $6,000. And our church at that time was, uh, well, it wasn't, it was actually bigger than we are today. <laughs> How's that for depressing? <laughs> but seven years ago, we were bigger than today. Um, but it, I, I think our church was about 40 people at that point in time. And one Sunday in this room, we had 
well, okay, we had 90 kids and t- uh, in kids church, and we had 210 people in this. We had 300 people in church that day. And, um, and, but they were not church people <laughs> because you know how I got them here? I, uh, I, uh, I, I bribed them. I did giveaways. <laughs> I had weird advertising with my, I think my naked rock star was involved in that. But a whole, I, I, I could ask some of you, it's possible some of you, but there have been people who are part of our church today that are here because of the money I spent back then. So I'm willing to take a step of faith. I'm willing to take a, uh, to spend money I don't have because God has always had my back. But I'm looking to hear from you, and I and, and I am open. So anyway, um, I have got about just short of ten minutes um, before we're uh, before we are scheduled to be done, and um, and, and I, this is pretty selfish of me, but I, Pastor Carol, I asked, I wasn't really trying to steal in your Lisa's microphone because I wanted to quit speaking. I wanted to have it in my hand. So I, would you? Share your heart with us, and would you pray for our church? Yeah. Everybody, Pastor Cal, I've known him for over 30 years. Uh, we were in uh, grade school together. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> uh, actually, in the sermon one year ago, I told the story where you fired me as worship leader. <laughs> Don't throw your stones. I'm glad you're yes. <laughs> so right to be with us. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just a way. And your message here this morning is really good. I, I really like that. Uh, I wrote it down here. The phrase. Now I'm forgetting it all of a sudden. Uh, let me see if I can bring it's it probably back in up the real mind quick. Uh, you know, I'm getting older, so it's harder to remember things sometimes. But. I actually wrote it uh, down here. You cannot play it safe and please God. Failure is often the first thing we experience when we step out. And I remember when I first took over as youth pastor in Wheaton, Illinois, I inherited the the worst youth group you've ever seen in your life. And I was used to having an on-fire youth ministry, uh, youth group, being a part of it. And that's where my life was changed. And the first youth meeting I went to, there were about 20 kids sitting in there. We, Our youth center was in the basement of a nursing home that the church owned. So that gives you a, 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 you know, that says something right there, doesn't it? And they were all sitting in the corner, and I'm we're getting excited about worship and praise, and all of a sudden they started singing, and this is no lie, kumbaya. And I was like, well, it, this can't be serious. And um, for about a year and three months, I remember I dedicated myself to just prayer and I've always been outreach oriented, and that's what I love about your heart, Pastor Scott and Inger Lisa. And I just love your heart for this. And and uh, I just remember God began to turn that corner, and I remember just watching all of a sudden, like you, taking a risk and stepping out, and never having more than twenty five kids at a youth service, and and thinking, and how could we? And we had sixty seven people show up at our first retreat. Over half of them rededicated their life to Jesus, and almost two-thirds of them got baptized in the Holy Spirit. It changed the whole thing that God did in that youth ministry. And then when I moved to Fargo, I was the youth pastor there, and, and um, you know, uh, it was hard for me to leave there. It was very hard to leave there, but I knew that it was to do, and I came on as evangelism pastor at First Assembly, which is Northview now. And that first year and several months, it was so difficult. I actually resigned and accepted another position in Toronto. And But God was dealing with my heart. Pastor Dan at the time asked me if I would stay and take on the youth position. And you probably remember me coming in during that time. Yeah, you fired me. And yeah. <laughs> I, 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 we, we joke about this, but I really love this guy. And, uh, but, you know, all of a sudden, I just, in prayer, and we just begin to go after it in prayer. And I've come to realize that there's three things that really change the lives of people. Prayer, outreach, and I know the third one doesn't sound as spiritual sometimes, but it's hospitality. You make people feel important, and you invite them into your life. You make a difference in people's lives. And that began to turn around. And then a year ago in uh, September, a little over a year ago, you know, we went the new direction. 
And I was, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I still am excited, but I got to tell you, this past year, everything got sidetracked. Everything. I didn't know what I was going to do, but through different things. I work at Starbucks four days a week, and people go, how can you work there? Because I get opportunity to share experiences just this Wednesday, and I'm sorry if I'm taking too long, but I usually work till about 1 in the afternoon, but for whatever reason, she let me off at 9 o'clock. As I'm leaving, a young girl was sitting there, standing there, and she looked at me and said, are you Pastor Cal? And I said, yes. She said, I was in your youth group many years ago. Would you pray for me today? Tears started coming. She was going to her son's funeral that morning. How does God do things like this for us? And it just reminded me again that every one of us, if we just stay focused on who he is and what he wants to do in our life, we can make a difference. And it may not seem gigantic, but it's, it's, it's uh, if you take this and you multiply it over and over of people that are just taking that audacious, audacious, audacious however you say that audacious. word. Yeah, that <laughs> word. That uh, step of faith. God will do some great things. I'm convinced, and I just have sent a letter out, and uh, yours is sitting on my table at home right now because I've just been sending to all the pastors in our North Dakota district. I believe this is going to be one of our greatest opportunities this year. I really believe it. I, I don't know how to define that. I know what's going on. I know everything. But right now, I believe this is our opportunity to touch lives. And so I just believe, and I just want to challenge you and encourage you. Be people of prayer. Be people that are, are willing to just, you don't have to do three points in a poem every time you talk to somebody. Just love people. Just love people and reach out to them. And I believe Rock Church was planted. I remember when you started to plant this and you moved from Heartland and there's more background story to that that I'll tell you later afterwards. But it's just, it's just fun to see what God does. And uh, I'm, I remember that time you told me about 200 plus people being in church that. I remember that story when you started telling me, just God, you're going to do this again and you're going to do it many times over. And God's given you a great opportunity. And... Uh, you guys, I just love you guys. I love you guys. Like I said earlier, Elizabeth, I love you on Sunday mornings. I just want you to know I love what, I turn it on just to see if you're in the car. She wasn't in the car this morning. It was 5.30 this morning when I came. <laughs> I so. But uh, I'm up at that time, too. <laughs> and uh, I want to pray for you. If you're comfortable, well, I was going to say we join hands, but we're in COVID time, so I guess we can't do that. But if you would, just look at the person next to you or, you know, four rows away from you and, and just say, what's your name or whatever, that sort of thing. Let's pray for one another. And Scott and Inger Lisa, I want to pray for you guys and your family. Let's pray. Father, I just believe with all my heart that, God, you're going to do a new thing. And, Lord, as, as Pastor Scott mentioned, sometimes when we step out in faith, it seems like it just, there's a failure. It seems that what, what more could go wrong? But, God, you have proven over and over that you have a dream and you have a desire and you have a direction you've chosen for us. We have, there are plans that you have already created long before we were even born. You already had uh, gifts and you were preparing us, Lord, even before we were uh, in human uh, flesh. And, God, as you direct our steps physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, over this next year ahead, I believe, God, that you want to touch the Rock Church and bless this church, bless this family of believers, that, God, you'd put an anointing on them, a double portion of your anointing, and that you would give them a discerning heart and be able to distinguish the right from the wrong, and then to give them wisdom and knowledge to govern and to lead and to set the example of what you want to do. I believe, God, that you're going to not only anoint them, that, Father, you're going to give them a fresh boldness, a new boldness, that you, as they are filled with your spirit and trust you and step out in faith, they will have boldness, much like what Peter demonstrated and other disciples demonstrated and others and Paul demonstrated as they would step out in faith in the most awkward of situations. And that, God, the conviction of the Holy Spirit would rest upon each one of us, but would rest on our community in a gigantic way. And that you would direct the steps, as the scripture says, you direct the steps of the righteous 
direct their steps, Father, and lead them. I pray over Pastor uh, Scott and Inger Lisa and their daughter Elizabeth that you'd watch over them and protect them and guide them. And, and Lord, as you give them a vision and direction of what to do, God, you're going to strengthen that and double their increase of what they would ever have expected and trusted you for. So, God, be with us in many, many ways, Lord. And may this truly be a year. I know in my heart of saying, reach the heart. You have created us to reach the heart of your creation that you love so much. And this is the plan you decided many years ago, God, to give your son Jesus to die on a cross that every person could have forgiveness. And may we not drop the ball. But may we be effective in sharing that same love, Jesus, that you had for others. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Cal. I love you guys. And we're, we're done. But I just want to point this out in case you missed it. Isn't it, I think that sometimes God plays with us. Of all the Sundays, Cal hasn't been here for many months. Of all the Sundays, for him to nudge him to come and be with us today, he was already going to be talked about. And I, I just think it was, I just think it was God, he gives us a little attaboys along the way. He does me at least, whether it's a, a really sweet moment in my devotions where he comes upon me during a hymn of all things, you know, or, or whether it's, it's having someone that you're going to talk about anyway, who is just, you know, dear to you. And I was going to, um, and who's been through, uh, yeah, I, this year has been crazy for Cal as well. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out in case you missed it, that God is enjoying us right now. I really believe that. You've heard me pray, Lord, let us make you smile. I think sometimes he just, he just enjoys his kids, and I, and I think that's happening today. May the Lord richly bless you, and I hope to see you in the, um, on the online Bible studies. Jesus was a rock star. Yeah.